Rune Factory 4 Special was one of my favorite games from 2020, so it was a no-brainer for me that I had to pick up Rune Factory 5 to enjoy its town life cross JRPG gameplay all over again. Rune Factory 5 is quite an update when you compare it to the visual style of 4, with the series finally upgrading from 3DS style visuals to full 3D models and towns that fit its move to the Switch well, although not always with the best performance with plenty of frame rate issues that can't help but make you wonder if it would run better on a higher powered system. But the magic of Rune Factory is that it made me not care at all as I got sucked into making friends with town people, farming, and going through its dungeons in my new favorite Rune Factory game, in this fun game that I enjoyed every day I played it as I enjoyed the balance of fun town life and helping with a big narrative all over again. In true Rune Factory style, you begin your town life awakening with a jolt and amnesia to set up your life as the newest member of town, gallantly protecting a young girl from a feisty woolly that sees you enter the town of Rigbar. You're accepted in by Field Captain Livia, who allows you to live in the town as long as you tend to a farm and join the organization Seed, a group that takes care of the troubles in the land that gives you plenty of work to earn your stay with. This, and a mix of dragons and making friends along the way, makes for the premise of town life in Rune Factory 5's world and like everything else in the game, we'll let you go as deep into it as you like at your own pace as a slow day-to-day -day life in Rigbar begins with all the freedom you could ever wish for. While you've been given work and things to do in Rune Factory 5, the joy of Rune Factory is that you can do whatever you like, and that includes a variety of things, from monster collecting, farming, romance, and even the main story if you're feeling committed to doing your job. As someone who tends to go main story first in my playthroughs, I like that the world lets you do that while also throwing in some forced free time, which actually makes sense when you consider that it would take time for these big story events to occur, and it just means that instead of just seeing the story, you play all the small moments in between too. You can be given a main story objective on a given day in Rigbar, complete it, and then have hours in the day left to use thanks to the fact that Rune Factory's city has a calendar and time that passes, and while you can just go to bed and progress to the next part to make for a quicker playthrough, Rune Factory 4 taught me that every hour of these days is valuable, and when you consider things like shops in the inn where you restore your RP to use skills only being open at a certain time, it encourages you to create your own game flow and consider what you do with your free time, whether that be doing quests from villagers, are playing with some of its many mechanics. For me, I mostly fell into a game flow of waking up, tending to my farms, creating a party of villagers or monsters, then progressing the main story until I couldn't anymore, then returning to the village in questing, which often resulted in talking to people and seeing their charming side events or defeating monster marks that made for a good day's work every time. All of this makes me feel like I had a well-balanced playthrough of 5, with my playthrough clocking in at about 75 hours. You could probably spend far less time if you rested, but most of the joy of Rune Factory is in embracing the world, and naturally I got sidetracked a few times for the main story too, whether it be from trying to catch all the adorable woolies I could, the seasonal town events that provide a variety, or any of the random events that popped up in the world, from romance stories to certain seeds being in season. And it's these things that make for a colorful playthrough I really enjoyed in 5 that once again cemented exactly what I love about this series. What I also love about it is I still feel like I've barely scratched the surface of it too, as each of of its mechanics has even more that you can dive into. I enjoyed its active combat and catching monsters on the field, but the game is still encouraging me to explore with dungeons I found on my journey that I previously couldn't access, and I have a bunch of weapons I could still level up too. I enjoyed farming in my playthrough of it too, but there are still seeds I could unlock and higher levels of vegetables to reach, and making friends was enjoyable too, and even in a morning just playing around in the world post-game, I found even more events, and I know that I can really get into this part by dating, marrying, or even having children with some of these characters if I really wanted to. The same sentiment can be said about the crafting or monster collecting parts that truly make for a world that you feel like you can make your own every playthrough, and the fact its calendar continues around its four seasons eternally means that you can enjoy this and watching the town people live their day-to-day -day lives as long as you like. It really is the freedom I loved in Rune Factory 4 but on a bigger scale, and with the more modern graphics that I couldn't help but enjoy that they made the world feel bigger in spite of some of their hiccups and it's definitely one I'd like to keep on my Switch as there's always something to do in this world, especially now I've finished the main story, and I definitely hope to play more of this experience as I really love the freedom in it.
As I've mentioned, Room Factory 5 isn't without its issues, with its frame rate being the most noticeable one as you run around in its world. To me, this issue wasn't so annoying, but could be an issue for those coming from Rune Factory 4 Special, especially if you tried it on PS4. Rune Factory 4 Special ran at a lovely and smooth 60 frames per second in its PS4 version, and in contrast, Rune Factory 5 as it is now on Switch runs at 30 frames per second, but with plenty of stutters and laggy moments, especially when entering new areas so if you love a smooth frame rate, know that you probably won't be finding it here. It's not so bad in my opinion though, as it never affected me in battle where it's the most important, but I did have about three crashes in my 75 hours with it that made for a tiny bit of backtracking, although luckily it does have an autosave feature at the very least that made it easy enough to get back into things, and only those crashes were only in the first 20 hours of my playthrough, although a few slower load screens towards the end did have me nervous at times. I feel like I should care more about these things, but as I said, I spent 75 fun-filled hours with 5, and these things never made me consider putting it down, as I was having so much fun doing weird and wonderful things with farming and monster collecting in its world. It would perhaps be nice to have it in a similar form to Rune Factory 4 Special on PS4 or something in the future, so that it can be even better. But as it is now, it's still an incredibly fun game, as long as technical things aren't your first priority. And for me, the things I look back in in 5 are the sweet townspeople, the variety of things to do in it, and the fun days and nights I spent running around in this world, and ensuing the next entry will be even better. It has me excited for the future of the series, as I can't wait to see the next world that Rune Factory has in store. If you can look past a few technical bumps here and there, there's a fun-filled world to be found in Rune Factory 5 that I highly recommend for fans of simulation games and wholesome JRPGs. The RPG side of it is fun with the way its story makes you feel a part of its town, with areas full of treasure and monsters to explore, and simulation elements to complement that can have you crafting things from weapons to explore with to cheesecake to give to someone for their birthday, while also letting you date a considerable amount of people in it that really makes for a colorful life in its town of Bar. It might not be the most high quality game we'll see this year, but it will likely end up being one of my favorites, as I really could find fun in this world for a long time if I continued to spend time with it, and I hope I get time to do so again, as this new Rune Factory entry has really cemented its place in JRPG series that I want to play much, much more of. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below if you tried Rune Factory 5 and if you have, what did you think of it? You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below. Thank you to Xseed for the code, and until next time, thank you, bye!